welcome to the Next Canon Podcast. My name is Danny Ray, but you know that. And we on this podcast are working to recreate and reimagine the theater canon so that it is more representative of what we want it to be. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited because today we have Alicia Nicole Walton. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Alicia uses she, her pronouns and tell the people just a little bit about yourself, my friend. Um, My name you already said that um, <laughs> i'm from california good old california girl living in seattle um i've been doing theater and things of that nature uh yeah i've been doing like theater acting singing dance and all that good stuff for always that's just the, always the thing i've done um yeah i have a degree in theater fun <laughs> Come through Cornish. We love that. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're yeah. also playwright extraordinaire. So ah, I just I would just write things. <laughs> I don't know, mate, like extraordinaire, I would say. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> no, it's so it's so awesome. We went to school together at Cornish, and you're just such a fabulous artist. It was an honor to be nearby your works. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Of course. <laughs> so what was the beginning of this panini like for you as we're rounding the corner and going back to live theater? What was the beginning-ish like for you? panini yeah, yeah. I, I was so many things when you said that I was like what panini, panini? Are we going I, was to like, I was like that wasn't in the email was I, supposed <laughs> to talk about a panini? I thought about panini from chowder that cartoon. oh yes mm -hmm. um the beginning of it was like I was in a touring show at the time and so thankful that we got to do pretty much most of it we did like all of it except the last week and um then I, I was working at Target at the time. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just work, 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 you know? And the beginning was like, I just didn't know. I'm like, I'd never been in like a pandemic, like on lockdown, <laughs> right? you know, anything like that. So I was just like, you know, and then it kind of went through the phase of like, what is life? What am I doing? Things yep. like that. <laughs> um, but, you know, slowly but surely found my footing and kept it kept it pushing kept it moving and kept you know pursuing various things and um yeah and just like trying to take roll with the punches whatever life throws at me yes we love it um so to get into our topic today we're gonna be exploring the theater canon and so what does the word canon mean to you what canon means to me I guess it's like what, how it's been explained in school. It seems like um, canon is what is taught, what it seems to be the standard, I guess, what exemplifies a good uh, genre, I guess you could say for theater. Um, canon is like, this is what we teach because it's a, it's a great example of how things should be, what we think is good, what we think is great. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would, I would say that's what canon is to me. What shows like scream like this is canon, this was taught to me as canon to you? Um, obviously like all Shakespeare. Um, what else, what else, what else? You know, I mean, honestly, just like anything by like, old white guys yep uh, um you know Beckett and um what is his name Pinter mm -hmm. uh that was like all the stuff we studied in school um what's that one British man's name Stoppard <laughs> Tom Stoppard <Yep. laughs> uh yeah I would say that's like a lot of it for um for straight theater for yeah non-musical theater theater yeah definitely that stuff it's like <laughs> what's that one british man's name was a really <laughs> funny <laughs> sentence <laughs> <laughs> like he's british there's, there's so many of them he, they teach him all know. the time <laughs> like, right i found that a lot of those shows i'm like yeah i never really read them like we exactly no <laughs> never <laughs> I couldn't pick it out of a uh, if you did a scene from it I wouldn't really be able to tell you which one it was from <laughs> right I I did kind of like 
one of Pinter's plays. Yeah, which one? Uh, Betrayal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did a scene from that one in school, and I, it was interesting to me. I'm not sure if I, I don't know if I, like, liked it subject mat like subject wise and stuff like that but it was it was interesting yeah the was lines like, and the relationships yeah. were interesting to me so yeah, the text and then getting into it as an actor yeah yeah definitely yeah absolutely Sorry, as I mop my sweat <laughs> <laughs> we're in a heat wave just in case anyone was uh not aware right. if you're in the pacific northwest all of us are <sighs> melting <laughs> melting because there's melting. no air conditioning yeah <laughs> I feel so I I just want to send everyone cold air and I'm just like I'm only in a basement I, know. I would so take it <laughs> I know if I could send it through the screen I would really send it all to you right I'd even take cold breath at this point like <laughs> I never thought I'd say that but I'll take it in this, <laughs> this, in this is COVID ridiculous. times that is a statement <laughs> right I'm exactly I'll risk it I'm vaccinated you know? me too <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here I'm over here wiping the sweat behind my knees like oh my that's, god that's too much it's yeah too much. I almost put on a sweater because I'm in a basement like I was like whoa Danielle that's a lot tank top yeah. is still okay um, that would be offensive. Too. I know. I'm I, just so I was at a. I was doing a meeting the other, like a week ago, when it was hot for you guys, maybe more than a week. But um, it was hot for Seattle, and and I'm in a basement, so it could have been mm-hmm. hot here too. It doesn't matter. I wore a sweatshirt to the meeting, and everyone was wearing tank tops with their hair up, and like, <laughs> and I was. Just, they were like, Danielle, why are you wearing a sweatshirt? And I didn't notice that what they were wearing either, because I was just like, oh, boop boop, at the meeting. <laughs> Uh-huh. and they were like what are you wearing isn't it hot and I was like you're right you're right I'm crazy it's fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't I don't have air conditioning you can't tell people because it's like no I don't <laughs> what is that right what I can hear I can hear it blowing <laughs> <laughs> my parents started putting a giant fan at the bottom of like our our stairs to blow the cold air up to the up to the uh second floor to like Uh, try and get some circulation i don't know how well it's working but right we'll find out (laughs) anything you could do i've heard the ice bucket with your feet in it helps i've heard that i used to make swamp coolers with like a bucket of water with like ice water and then a fan blowing over that called a swamp cooler my dad told me he's an engineer I don't yeah. know those things whoosh like cold air I don't yeah know. yeah I'm, I'm probably gonna have to invest in that I've been like on the fence but now I'm like nah I think that needs to happen something something to do yeah. something about something's it. gotta give <laughs> <laughs> exactly well to get back to our topic today so in yes. that realm of the canon what is your show that's gotta go and I say show that's gotta go we're just putting them on the shelf. We're not burning these books, everyone. Everyone in the audience, <laughs> burn them. Unless it needs to be burned, <laughs> let us know. What's your show that's got to go? My personal show that has to go is My Fair Lady. Okay. Uh, or Pygmalion. Mm-hmm. Same thing, you know. Pygmalion <laughs> is or My Fair Lady is based off of Pygmalion. I don't like it. I don't like that show. I don't like that play. I don't like you, Harold Higgins. Like, he <laughs> sucks. The whole play, the whole play is just so whack to me. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, I used to kind of like it as a kid. I saw this one production of it at, what was that? Oregon, the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in high school. Cause my um, school in California was like, it was like six hours away. So we would go and have field trips there. And I saw mm-hmm. a production of it. And I was like, whoa, I like the way it was done. I thought it was so cool. And then also I was just like, I want to do theater for the rest of my life. So I was like, <laughs> anything was cool. I wasn't too much of a critical thinker at that time. But um, yeah, I just don't, I don't like it. I don't like, I don't really personally, I guess, you know, as a, as a black woman, but honestly, uh, I don't like language things like that like like the whole like language and grammar shaming is mm. basically what that show is you know yeah it's like here's this dumb little dirty girl on the streets that can't talk right i bet you i can turn her into a human being and that's that's the plot of the show you know they're like ooh, look at her she's dumb as hell let's fix the way she talks <laughs> like and then once they did it they're like ah 
ah, we did it. And then they just kind of are like, why are you still here, dumb girl? Go away. <laughs> like, <that's so laughs> like you were a toy to us and now we're done with you. But except, exactly. And then like the show is kind of, it's kind of aware of that in a way, you know, she's like, she's like, you didn't care about me. Like, you didn't care about me at all, you know? And he's like, ah, I kind of care, I guess, you know? But I'm just like, I don't know. I don't think that that show is necessary. I don't think it's something that adds really, um, adds to theater and stuff like that, you yeah. know? I have to say, I don't, I, that's one of the ones you always hear about and I've never seen it. And so your explanation of it just yeah. made me want to bomb, number one. And like, what? Why would I want to watch that? <laughs> I'm like, that's very the Alicia filter of the of the show. But that's, the, it, essentially it is, that is what it is. It's like he, he, um, there's this girl and she's like, they're um, in Britain and she has like, you know, a really thick Cockney accent and stuff like that. And then she's like talking, having an argument with somebody because she's like really poor and trying to sell flowers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a guy in the corner and he's like kind of writing down the things that she's saying. And then she's like, who are you? And basically he's like a linguist and he studies, um, studies accents and can kind of pinpoint where people are from like very accurately based off of how they talk mm -hmm. and so um he meets her and he's like you're trash essentially <laughs> I can I can make you like an actual lady from the way you talk and pass you off as a princess he makes a bet with one of his friends that he can do that mm -hmm. and um so they're like you're on and you know my fair lady uh is the um the musical where she's like, where they're like, by George, I think she's got it. Like that, that's where that expression right, okay. comes from yeah. and stuff like that. And then so they're like toting her off as like a high class lady because they changed the way that she talked, you know, and it's like, cool, great, you know? <laughs> uh, the yeah. bet motif is so interesting because I was just watching, uh -huh. uh, I was just watching ironically what's the one um how to lose a guy in 10 days for some reason that movie uh, it, it just came on and I was like they bet this person that they could change someone else they bet each other that's such a motif yeah it happens like I've, so I've often. never seen that one but it's so yeah. basically like Matthew McConaughey and yeah girl whose name I should know but my brain is forgetting right now um I know I know who it is oh i know who her mom is oh. she is also the girl who owns fabletics that lady who does the leggings who does but her mom the <laughs> her mom is goldie hahn yes 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 is it kate is her name kate kate kate, <laughs> kate is not it you winslet. not so winslet there's so many kates there's so many kates winslet, kate, Sarah. Kate. um where is it uh she looks like a cape <laughs> well, i should really know her how to lose a guy in 10 days 2003 kate mm -hmm. hudson there it is hudson, hudson. Okay. yeah so anyways she bets her uh her boss that she can get him to fall out of love with her in 10 days so fall in and out of love and like lose him by doing all of these oh. like cringy like quote unquote crazy girlfriend like uh stereotypes not really real things most like I've never seen a real person do these things but yeah. she like takes it so far and then he bets his boss and his co-workers that he can make a any woman any woman fall in love with him in 10 days and they both have uh -huh. the same uh thing they don't know each other um and okay the, the girls who are his co-workers they're like fighting for this thing they like pick out this girl in the bar who is at the bar also trying to pick out the guy and she's on her way oh, to find okay. her friends are like oh let's pick that one and they send her over and he intercepts and so then craziness ensues uh-huh and then, and it's it's like you're just trying to change each other and there's a big fight at the end because they both got told that they were yeah in a bed yeah like that'll that'll pretty much do it <laughs> like imagine someone right. walking up to you and being like oh you know your your partner that you're seeing I bet them that they w wouldn't get your number or like, I bet them that they couldn't sleep with you and yeah. or whatever. It's like, that's fine, but you were also in a bed. 
Like yeah. y'all were both betting. So you can't even be mad. You just, they should be. If I was in a bet and then they were in a bet, I'd be like, dang, you got in a bet too? Ain't that crazy? <laughs> well, like, now, if it was just one person in a bet with somebody, I totally get that. Yeah. But y'all were both in a bet. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> their beds were so conflicting like I'm gonna lose you and the other one was I'm gonna keep you and so the only reason he didn't leave and she didn't win the bet is because he was in a bet to keep her <laughs> yeah uh, like, what? it's wild that's um, so funny I know what that's a weird so motif funny. it does pop up every yeah. once in a while yeah because there's this one movie there's this one movie that oh my gosh, is so much like Pygmalion. I'm just <gasps> realizing that whole, because Pygmalion is a story on its own. That's its own play. And then I can't, I'm not even sure if it's like Greek or something, but the My Fair Lady is an adaptation from the 50s. So, but um, there's one called, there's a movie called Trading Places with okay. uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd from like the 80s, like when Eddie Murphy was in SNL 80s, yeah. you know? <laughs> the yes. And, yeah. And um, so, and basically it's the same thing though. These two rich white dudes are like, Eddie Murphy's like homeless on the streets, you know, being classic yeah. Eddie Murphy crazy. <laughs> but um, they're like, uh, he's like, I bet you Mortimer, that's his name is Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> Mortimer. <laughs> I'll tell you why I remember that. But um, <laughs> they bet him that he could, uh, turn him into a business executive in a certain amount of time mm -hmm. basically like fat my fair lady of turning her into a lady um that is oh no that's thing. what they do they take they take eddie murphy turn him into a business executive and then they ruin dan Aykroyd's life oh he is the business executive and that's what the trading places is oh. about i'm not sure if they bet that they can like ruin, ruin dan Aykroyd's life, life or, or if they're just like you you're out and we're going to put him in his place. I don't know if that's what it is. I don't know. But, that's diabolical um, but then, if they were like, we can destroy this man. Right. And like, <laughs> but eventually like the two of them find out about the bet and then they end up playing two old rich white dudes and like run off with the money and stuff. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. She's a, she's a stripper or a hooker or something like that. And she runs off with Dan Aykroyd too. And, and uh, yeah, and then they lose all their money. <laughs> but then Eddie Murphy's movie, uh, Coming to America, they, he's like a, a prince. He's like an African prince, yes. like undercover trying to find a wife basically yes. in America. Yeah. And, um, they, there's a scene where he has all this money. He's trying to, he's trying to be like a regular person. So he like lives in, in like Harlem, you know, like a rough part of like New York and stuff and he doesn't want to look like he has money and he has all this cash in this like brown paper bag and he sees these two homeless men on the street and he just like puts it down next to them so they can have it and it's the two old white dudes from uh trading places and he's yes like, Mortimer, we're back you know <laughs> that, I, this is one of my favorite things from movies I love that That's <laughs> like, like crossovers and stuff like that or like yeah yeah callbacks I think is what they call it sometimes in comedy or like, oh, like just a calling back to whatever thing that you were doing um, I love stuff like that so good <laughs> in coming to America the second one coming to America there were so many ah. like really fun did you watch it no, I haven't seen it yet. I heard it was pretty good though. It was actually awesome. Like I really liked it. Um, nice. I, I hadn't watched Coming to America in a billion years, like the first yeah. one. And so I was uh -huh. like remembering everything and like they still do the same like character, like like they're they're all the characters that they played the first time plus like Yeah. And it's like Oh my gosh. It is see that's like that's like what my style of comedy is absolutely yeah. based off of. Cause I like, I was obsessed with Eddie Murphy as a kid. I was like, I'm gonna be just like him. And like watched <laughs> all his movies. And like, that's why I love actors playing a bunch of different characters. Like, yeah. oh, I love that so much. It is much. So, so fun. fun. If you, uh, this is a random aside. There's a show called Ghosts. It's a, a UK show and it is comedy. Oh. And oh, there is a little bit of that. And I think you would probably really like it. And the audience would probably, I don't know, you might like it. Um, but they're just like, basically they live in this, these two people inherit a house 
um, uh -huh. and it ends up being haunted and you have to mm -hmm. figure out how these ghosts died throughout the show mm -hmm. basically um, but th this the girl who inherits the house gets pushed out of a window by the only ghost that can actually touch anything like at all and he's mm -hmm. like I could solve our problem of these people being here. I'll just push her out the window. She's already leaning out dangerously. I'll just help her. And then she doesn't quite die, but she gets so close to death that she can now see them. Oh. So I'm ruining the first episode for everyone. I should have put a spoiler oh, there, but it sets up the whole thing. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's just so oh. silly. And they're doing, they're doing um, a US version. And I'm so intrigued. I'm so intrigued. One of the people I follow on Instagram from, do you follow hashtag booked? Uh-huh. They're amazing. It's one of them, isn't it? It's, yeah, Danielle. She's in yes. it. Yes. I think it's, uh -huh. I, I never see their real names because I follow I both of them separately as well. Yeah, because um, the last the last name of the other one is Fredericks or something like that. I'm like trying uh -huh. to see their names in my head, um, but she's on it. Um, and I just love them so much. So I was very excited yes. and I really hope that they change up the story too. So that it's like the, you, somewhere in the U S and like the people who would have been here, like who had passed yes. away. Cause like they usually totally. in increments of 200 years basically is where these people are from. Oh, and so, like there's someone from like, would have been, uh, like a poetic like Shakespearean era almost person and there's a caveman who's amazing <laughs> and then there's someone who was like um in the parliament like 10 years ago so oh, it's like such oh. a range of things there's a Victorian era there's one of my favorite characters who was burned at the stake for being a witch <laughs> And she's so funny. Like she's so funny. Um, Dude, I'll so have to check that out. You do. So it's funny. on HBO Max for everyone who's interested. I'm oh, okay. I'm so waiting for the US version because some awesome comedians are like on the team for it, and I'm just stoked. Yes. So oh. that is the dream. I know, dude. Uh, I know. And there's there's multiple characters that people play as well that you're like, oh my uh, god, is that the same person? Like they're totally changed. Um, uh -huh. it's so funny. I'm like, you just didn't want to get extras, and that was a really smart move. <laughs> right. I would I would do the same thing. That, they do that in anime all the time. Oh, like, I love that. I'm like, that is absolutely one of the main characters. You can't fool me. <laughs> I hear you, sir. Because like, I'll look up and I'll be like looking for the character. And I'm like, they just use them. They're like, hey, you're not doing nothing in this scene. Go, go be an, go be the extra. Go, go be the guy. Go makeup like, on and they'll go hey! you up a little. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I would love that. I would so do stuff like that. I'd be like, just put me in random places. Yes. Because it'd be so funny. Yeah, that's also the satisfying thing about um, uh, Stan Lee in all of the Marvel movies. Yes, it just absolutely. appears everywhere. I live for it every time. Every time mm -hmm. I'm like, when you see a new movie, you're like looking for him. You're like, where is he going to show up? You expected it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so satisfying. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so in in lieu of like these Pygmalion esque repetitions, <laughs> yes, <laughs> what are we gonna bring into the canon, and what is your show that everyone should know? Um, bringing into the canon, what is my show? I thought about this. I'm like, I'm not super sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not totally sure, but that's what I landed on. Yes, what I landed on is making new work a part of canon I think that is what's to me what's important mm -hmm. is because I feel like we if you weren't in playwriting you didn't even think about new work you oh know my God. like at our like school you mean or yeah like personally at our ever, school yeah and that was only really because of uh, shout out who knows if he'll see this but i love him so much a ray pamatma yes an, ama an amazing playwright and actor because he we did like a little reading for one of my plays and i just i made everybody read and i was like haha now you have to read a ray and he's <laughs> yes. he was so good and i'm like sir <laughs> what but um <laughs> but making me he he um brought in new plays for us you know mm -hmm. and that's what really brought my awareness to that of course and it's like it makes sense of course if you're somebody who's writing new plays but um I feel like as an actor you you would want to be in new plays too mm -hmm. I mean because I, I mean 
we do act too. And I'm just like, I feel like that needs to be a part of canon. Yeah. making giving acting students new things and making sure there is a diversity of new things because I can't even remember what it was but we were learning about different uh play theories and stuff like that yeah. and then there was the one theory that was like there are no there are no old classics throw them all out you know throw out the classics and I'm definitely I'm definitely on that in that spectrum spectrum mm-hmm. because it's like when you I don't know, to me personally, I guess as a writer, as somebody who wants to be an up and coming, you know, um, <clears throat> playwright, I just don't really like the mentality of this is what's good. This like right. 400, 500 year old Shakespeare play and there'll never be nothing better than it. And I'm like, I like Shakespeare. I really yeah. do. Like Romeo and Juliet pops off every time. That's definitely hands down one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. It doesn't, that's never not good to me. And I'm like, that's cool. But how can you how can you allow space for new playwrights yeah. when we're all, we're always being told you'll never write anything as good as Beckett, okay? So get over it. And I'm just like, okay, okay. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, you know, like, what is that? Uh, waiting for God is cool. It's all right. Like, <laughs> I'll pro- maybe somebody can probably write something better than that. You know. I'm I mean, but, Waiting um, for Godot uh, versus Passover by Antoinette Nwandu. They're so man. Sp- Yes, yeah. Was, but like, Passover was so good. Passover is so, so amazing. Good. I uh, love it. I would say that was one of the plays I was thinking of about making canon though. Yeah. But then I realized like all the plays that I thought about were new plays. Yeah. And I was like, just make, just have the space for new plays in, in theater education, you know, yeah. for everybody. And I feel like we also need to figure out how to make it easier to find them for up and coming actors. Yes, absolutely. I, until, yeah. until A-Ray's class, I never really was able to find them. Like I did want to look because that's like a great place to look for new monologues as someone who is looking for audition mm-hmm. material. Yeah. But like, it was like, where do I find this? And I didn't know about the new play exchange. And then on there, it's mm-hmm. like hard to sift through. And it's like, how can we figure out what's new, yeah. hip, what's fun, what we like. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I went to see a uh, Dragon Lady, Sarah Porkalob in mm. the U District multiple years ago. Yeah. One of the most stunning pieces of musical theater that I've ever seen. Dang it, Famous. I didn't see it. Oh my goodness. Uh, whenever, if she like does it, she was planning on doing one right as the, the, um, the Coronas, <clears throat> the Coronas started up yes, last year. Yeah. She was going to do a triple, uh-huh. like a, a, like a I don't know if it was going to be like a subsequent both Dragon Lady and Dragon Mama but I was going to go see it like I had already like I was I was re- waiting to buy my tickets and then everything shut down and I was like so maybe she'll do one again before heading to the east coast with it but like nice. that's a person to have on the podcast as well but like yeah new work like that is just amazing and so it's like it's got to come in. It's got to come play. Everyone has to see yeah. it. Yeah. Everyone has yeah. to see it. We love it. Um, yes. Do you have any shows or anything around you that you want to like promote today? Anything that I want to promote? Um, yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine who also went to school with us because those are the only people that I know. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my parents, I don't, I don't know who those are. Don't know what those are. I only have people in your that home. <laughs> right. Intruders. <laughs> 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 um, but um, friend Matthew Moore, he has a um a oh my god, words are so hard. He has a <laughs> podcast called Legacy. Yes. And it is based off of his and his friend's uh, D&D campaign. And um, yeah, and there's lots of people on it, lots of people that we know. Yes. And y'all should definitely check it out. I think yes, if you just I will link it below. I'll Legacy, link it below. Podcast. Legacy Podcast is a good way on Spotify. I don't know, <laughs> probably everywhere else because Austin, yeah. like with one of their like leaders is 
so good at getting everything to go where it's supposed to go. <laughs> right, right. Like she's amazing. Um, but yeah, though, I'm so stoked on that podcast as well. Like they're so, I love them. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. So check them out. I'll link them below as well. Um, and do you have any self promo you'd like to shout out today? Self promo, self promo. No, not really. I'm not really, I'm kind of taking a, taking a little breaky break nice. from the acting yeah, I didn't realize I've been acting for like 10 years nonstop. <laughs> I, was I was like 15. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I should take a break. And then I like tried to and was still doing shows. And I was like, <laughs> this isn't a this break. This is taking a break, right? Ain't it? <laughs> no. So yeah, just taking a little, taking a little breaky break, doing some other things and stuff, uh, doing a lot of dancing. Yes. Yeah. So, Love it. Yeah. Do you go to a studio and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. That's I go fun. to this one studio. Shout out if you're in the Seattle area. It's called Choreo, spelled C-O-R-E-O. Yes. And they have like, they have an Afro class taught by one of my friends who's so good, Kine. And then uh, they have like a bunch of uh, hip hop classes at different levels. They have, you know, beginner level, if you've never danced before in your life, and then like an advanced beginner, that's like, you know, a little harder. And then they have level three, which can be a challenge or just ridiculously hard. <laughs> Depends on, on what the, the choreographer wants to do. <laughs> Honestly, like, I don't know if I'm going to be like one of the, one of the better people in the class, or if I'm going to be one of the like, two-footed like two left-footed <laughs> two ugly ducklings struggle bus to these professor, <laughs> yeah like professional dancers I'm like ah who knows <laughs> yeah figure it out I'm fine <laughs> yeah but it's well, so much so fun. fun and then they have these like they have these little bungee classes too it's like yeah I yeah. definitely almost went there because I was like I want to do this yeah. bungee class and then like COVID and I was like F <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, they're doing them now it's a lot of fun Okay, maybe when yeah. I come back to the city, I'll be like, um, hello, bungee class. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. Um, and so for my last question today, yeah. I have a sneaky question that you don't know about. Take the question class, is <laughs> the question is, who would you like to see on this podcast? Who would you tune in and watch? Mm -hmm. Who would I tune in to watch? Who would I tune in to watch? Nobody, because I don't like people. Well, so, so. Um, I think I think somebody cool to do would be um, my good good friend Hermona Mitchell, because she okay. is the coolest person. She's ever. been on. She's been on. Oh Wonder man, she has been on. I love her. She's amazing. Yeah, she's so literally like, oh, she's so cool. So cool. Yeah. I adore her. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to give another answer sure. to someone you haven't done? Maybe. Oh, I, I don't know if I have. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, I'm nah, also no. in talk. <laughs> like I, I messaged Ray a while ago to see if he could actually come on the podcast. And he was yes. really busy at the time. He was like, call me in six months. And I'm like, it's been five months and 12 days. <laughs> a wink, I like, I like to do this thing where I say like, wink, wink, but don't blink. It's just like <laughs> a wink, <laughs> wink, a wink, wink. <laughs> I think like that a is, prolonged eye contact plus you know wink uh, wink wink like huh. someone who just thinks that saying wink wink is <laughs> it's good you enough do. you don't actually <laughs> wink <laughs> exactly <laughs> there that's so funny um well thank you so much for being on the podcast today yes thank you for having me this is um, so much fun I know it's just always such a great time and I like start sweating the whole time because I'm like heat lamps having too much fun laughs everywhere it's a grand old time you should go and watch Shimona's episode because she's amazing and I love her yeah, but, um, <laughs> but um thank you so much again and thank you to everyone listening and if you are listening please you know I don't know give it a like give it a thumbs up a stars like five of them please five is preferred I don't know where you're listening so do whatever you're supposed to do on the platform that you are on thank you guys yeah. so much and we'll see you next time goodbye bye